How's it going Star Seekers? My name's Luke and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Cathedral. It's a retro inspired metroidvania title whose visuals will no doubt lead it to being compared with another game containing a certain shovel wielding knight. But don't rule out the game as a knockoff just yet, as setting aside the visual similarities, Cathedral still has plenty to offer should you be up for the challenge. With its vast interconnected world, NES difficulty factor and plenty of collectibles to keep you busy, Cathedral boasts over 20 hours worth of gameplay, but can it do enough to distance itself from those comparisons and are you even tough enough to play the game? Let's get into this review and find out. So after selecting a new game slot and creating a new character, Cathedral begins without any sort of explanation and we find ourselves playing as a knight clad in red plate armour who appears to have been teleported into this location from somewhere. Armed with only our trusty sword, we then take control of said knight and begin on our journey to seek answers. Now Cathedral's storyline is kept purposefully obscure, but as you work your way through the game you'll uncover the meaning behind your arrival in the world, learning its story from citizens and books. I won't be revealing much of this to you in this review, but one of your primary objectives in the game is to retrieve 5 spirit orbs in order to unlock a door hidden away in the cathedral. This however is easier said than done, as each orb is protected by powerful beings which you must first vanquish before you can acquire them. So the game starts off at a reasonable pace, teaching you the basics of platforming and combat. Enemies in this first area are rather tame, but believe me when I say that Cathedral soon steps up the pace and be prepared to suffer many many deaths throughout your playthrough. Controlling our character with either the d-pad or left thumbstick, platforming in the game is fluid and overall pretty solid. We can jump with a b-button, swing our sword to whack baddies with the y-button, and as with Shovel Knight we can perform a downwards attack to bounce off the heads of enemies, but this has to be timed correctly and you can't just hold down in the attack button. Working our way through the first areas of the game we encounter several different enemy types and overall enemy variety in the game is pretty good, with all your staple monster archetypes making an appearance such as slimes, skeletons, knights, harpies and of course bats. Each area has its own unique set of enemies, each with their own attack patterns, so there is a persistent challenge in learning how to defeat each enemy type. When it comes to levels themselves, the world of Cathedral is pretty large, spanning many different zones, each with their own unique visuals setting them aside from one another, and as with monsters, the platforming mechanics and hazards you face in each zone are often unique, though owing to the game being a metroidvania, there is some crossover with these as you utilise newfound objects to progress through them. Now Cathedral makes a point of not holding your hand, and while the first area is pretty linear in design, once you make your way out into the wider world, you're free to explore and work out where you need to go next. This can be a little frustrating at times as you'll frequently encounter blockades which require certain items to bypass or wander unwittingly into later game areas only to be obliterated by the first enemy you face. If you are struggling to find a way forward though, the developers have kindly included this strange fella who will look into his crystal ball and drop you a hint on what to do next. Now as you work your way through the game, you'll begin to accrue a number of different items, artifacts and abilities, all of which make your life much easier by improving your chances of survival, and offering ways in which to progress past the previously mentioned roadblocks. The first items you acquire are the shield, which actually comes in very handy as it can be used to block certain projectiles or attacks, and the bow gauntlet which can be used to fire arrows or objects or attack enemies from a distance. You do however have a limited ammo supply with your bow, which can be topped up with arrows dropped from dead enemies, and as with games like Metroid, you can find expansion capsules to increase your maximum ammo count. Now in addition to extra ammo, defeated enemies can drop a number of different items, including heart pieces to restore your health seen in the top left, or gold which can be spent on a bunch of different items and upgrades. 
Enemies respawn each time you leave an enter a screen so you can if you choose to farm them for currency and there are several different towns in the game containing shops where you're able to spend it. Here you can buy things such as new armour to increase your maximum health, utility items like the compass which allows you to teleport back to your last checkpoint. This is quite important as when you die you lose 10% of your carried gold and get teleported back to your last checkpoint though there are also items in the game which reduce this gold penalty. Now in addition to the shop bought items, there are plenty of other collectibles to find out in the wide world, many of which are missable. You have things like augmentations for your armour which increase your starting health after death or attract nearby items to you, sword upgrades which increase the amount of damage you deal with each attack, and charms which grant new abilities such as double jump or the ability to control this little spirit dude for a few seconds, using him to solve puzzles and collect distant objects. It's worth noting though that you're only able to equip two items at once or three charms at a time, so expect to be switching between them frequently depending on the situation. I quite like the variety of the items in Cathedral and while they do see most of the use within levels themselves, they're also implemented into several of the game's boss battles. Now when it comes down to Cathedral's difficulty, I'm not gonna lie, it's a very challenging game. While there are plenty of checkpoints dotted throughout levels permitting a sigh of relief whenever you reach one, between each checkpoint you'll constantly be facing tough platforming and battling brutal enemies, all of which are able to kill you in just a few hits regardless of your upgrades. Despite its difficulty though, it really felt as though the game was being on fur or cheap and there was almost always a solution where you could come out unscathed providing you had the skills and reaction speed to perform it. Levels themselves are plenty challenging with many different hazards standing between you and a boss and the items and charms you collect are frequently put to good use in a number of different ways. When it comes to the game's bosses, expect plenty more deaths as you try and work out the best way to approach them and learn to exploit the weaknesses. As with the rest of the game, the developer doesn't hold back on the difficulty of bosses and I built up plenty of rage each time I faced one, but they weren't impossibly difficult and through persistence you'll eventually work out how to beat them. Each boss has its own mechanics to contend with which change part way through the fight and as I said before, some of the bosses require you to utilise the items and charms you've obtained. I actually really struggled with several of the game's bosses, especially the damn necromancer, but I'm pretty shy at most games, so let's not gauge its difficulty based on my experience. Overall, Cathedral is definitely up there as one of the most challenging metroidvanias I've played, but because of this it's also one of the most rewarding I've played, with every checkpoint reached, puzzle solved and boss beaten feeling like an achievement in its own right. Now content wise there's plenty on offer here with around 15 to 20 hours required to finish the base game with another 5 or so on top of that to hunt down all the collectibles including power ups and hidden books which can net you a bit of cash each time one is returned. I think that the only thing I'd have to criticise about the game's content is that you often have to retrace your steps through areas which does somewhat contribute to the completion time. As far as any other complaints go, I really have very few. Several of the bosses did feel impossible at first and I think they could have included an easy mode for people wanting to play the game in a more casual manner but unfortunately they didn't so if you're thinking of picking up Cathedral then you better be prepared for a challenge. So far as visuals and audio go, I really liked the game's visuals, nothing felt like it was just copied and pasted into the game and as with Shovel Knight the NES palette really works. The game also has some fantastic retro sound effects and an awesome soundtrack to go along with them, with each area having its own unique tune to rage along to. In all, Cathedral is a great addition to the metroidvania genre and if you've got a craving for a bit of NES level difficulty then Cathedral definitely has plenty to serve you. When it comes to a rating, I'm going to be giving Cathedral 4 out of 5 stars. Cathedral is a game which shouldn't be judged by looks alone, it's clear that there's been a lot of passion injected into the game and while it's easy to consider it as a hardcore metroidvania version of Shovel Knight, there's actually a lot of depth to the game and plenty of content to keep you busy, at least until you smash your switch up in a fit of rage. You can get Cathedral from the UK Switch eShop for £12.59 or from the US eShop for $11.99. Alternatively, the game's also available on Steam.
And that's about it for this review of Cathedral for the Nintendo Switch. Don't forget to hit that like button if it helped you out. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on it and this review in the comments section below. And consider subscribing to be notified of new Switch game reviews I publish every few days. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.